first of all, a lovely evening to all the dear participants who have spent the time to invest in best of the knowledge available online. And Sandeep Ansari from the team GIBS Business School Bangalore. We all are connected virtually for the GIBS Spreading the Light of Knowledge webinar series. On the topic, 21st century skills in the world of learning and development. On, GI, on behalf of GIBS Business School Bangalore, I welcome all the participants to this webinar. Before we start, kindly allow me to say a few words about GIBS Business School Bangalore. GIBS is a part of Goyal Educational Trust, which is a charitable trust. Just a moment, ma'am. I think Sandeep sir is. Uh... Yeah, Uh, madam, yes, sir. I'm so sorry the system got crashed. Sorry for the technical glitch. Yeah, so uh, it's all in a day's I, work I, in the world that we live in today. So, before we proceed further, so GIVS has introduced a series of free national level webinars and international level webinars, leadership talk series, and a panel discussions on trending topics called GIVS Spreading the Light of Knowledge aims to bridge the gap between the classroom learning and the ground realities of the business world by inviting national and international thought leaders who are the industry experts, academic luminaries, and entrepreneurs to share their vast array of challenging experiences. GIBS is also being featured in the Forbes India magazine, which is the world's top leading business magazine as New HB School. GIBS is very, very excited to share that it has been ranked as 11th best top emerging B school in India by Times of India School Survey. So without much ado, I welcome you all once again to this webinar. I deem it, I deem it as my privilege to welcome Ms. Smita, the resource person of today's webinar. Ma'am, we are really glad that you have accepted our invitation and to grace this webinar. Happy to see you, ma'am. Thank you. Today's webinar topic is 21st century skills in the world of learning and development. And uh, here I would love to introduce Smita ma'am to this August gathering. Ms. Smita Shrikam is a learning and development professional and an entrepreneur with varied experience in multiple arenas in various organizations. She comes with an experience of 20 plus years in the field of l &D, a postgraduate in English language and literature. Ms. Smita has a base in inculcating the importance of English as a global business language to the youth. She then followed up this by setting up training centers through which, along with her team and imparting English communication skills and behavioral training in various institutions and organizations. For 12 years, she's partnered with Vita, a training company, and headed three of the centers handling the training, assessment, and mentoring. And then she launched a her own company in the name of fluency and ran it for three plus years. As a world change, she understood the need to go global and digital. And now she is the chief of strategy for Edstella, a holistic platform for learning and development. Madam is also a certified master trainer, behavioral accessor. She's also a posh and career counselor certified professional and work across the domains like retail, pharmaceutical, IT, branding, sales, healthcare, manufacturing, cybersecurity, and educational sectors as well. As a facilitator and a training consulting, she's worked with the corporates like Capgemini, Toyota, Biocon, Tori Harris, Aquent, Reliance Insurance, SAP, KPMG, PwC, and much many other premium institutions like Christ University, Ramaya University, NIFT, St. Clarence, Jane University, and so on and so forth. She's also been a certified behavioral and English accessor, a work 
with organizations like Biocon, PwC, Strides, BFS, Vela, and Ensign House of School, and many more in this arena. She has also been an LD consultant who helped the organizations to upskill and is passionate about designing and developing the competency frameworks and learning journeys for employees and organizations. She believes that she is a people's person, and this has ignited her passion of training and facilitating people to reach out and to realize their potential. She is also in the board of members of one of the top leading and learning and development forums called LND. During the pandemic, she has conducted various virtual, to virtual webinars, meets, and networking events to enable the professional to continue learning. And so on and so forth. Ma'am, I would say that I will have to cut down your. Uh, I know. Uh, I know. It's, it's for that. too long, Sandeep, sir. So I request uh, a small request to all the participants in case if you have any queries, any doubts, anything is there, you can put it in the Q&A section. We will take it at the end of the session. So uh, Smita ma'am, I wholeheartedly welcome you again for the session and over to you ma'am. Thank you so much Sandeep sir and uh, it's a pleasure to be here again with GIBS. One of the institutions that Sandeep sir missed when he was talking about the institutions that I work with is GIBS and it's uh, been wonderful every time I've been there. I've really enjoyed being with Thank you. Thank you so much. It means a lot. With everybody there and I'm sure uh, many of the students here also who have logged in would definitely uh, know me. So yes, absolutely. So thank you so much uh, Sandeep sir. So I'm having a little bit of network issues so I may keep going on and off the video if that's okay because uh, of bandwidth issues. So to begin with, uh, let me start off with talking about what 21st century skills in the world of learning and development means basically. So we often hear this word, right? This terminology rather than word where we say, what is this 21st century skills and what does it mean and how is it different from what we've been learning or what we've been doing all these years. And when I talk about 21st century skills, it's not just about uh, organizations or corporates, it's about education across. You know, it's about educational institutions or it's about even schools per se. And it's uh, it's been quite some time since we've been talking about this 21st century skills. But what has happened in the uh, era in the past couple of years is that we've been forced to face this. Okay, because of the pandemic and because we came virtual, we became virtual and all of us have been in this space and right now that's where we are and that's how we are able to connect as well. So one of the learnings that we have from what we've been calling 21st century skills is that, you know, it's possible to work virtually, you can be anywhere in the world and yet the work can continue. So, however, it's not very clear, you know, and it relates to things like... Uh, uh, employability, education and hiring and uh, all these are interconnected. It's not just about uh, 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 being in studying somewhere or it's not just about uh, working somewhere. All these are interconnected and I'm sure everybody will agree with me that when we talk about 21st century skills, we're talking about an array of skills which uh, talk about, which connect employability, education and hiring. So all of us are on that journey. So we've all seen old jobs, you know, when, you know, uh, years ago, or even when I started working, uh, it was very different. The whole world was different. And now old jobs have fallen victim to automation. And one of the reasons, like Sandeep sir mentioned when he was talking about my long profile, I should cut it short next time, was how I decided to take a shift to digital world, you know, take a shift to digital world because that's the way forward because automation and advancing technology has changed everything and it has made the need for transferable skills and, you know, new knowledge and new competencies that is majorly increased in the world today. So we have to, in fact, we have been forced to in the pandemic to actually acknowledge these new competencies. You know, we've been forced to embrace this new knowledge and we've been forced to understand what transferable skills are. We'll talk more about these things as we move on. So what we are going to do now, right now is let's, let's see a few things and let's examine how the need of the workplace has changed because of the global economy and what are these terms and definitions and what are these skills that we are talking about and how are they taught or transferred and how are they assessed, right? So when you talk about competencies, you talk about how these things are assessed as well. What is the meaning of this? It's not just enough to learn something. It's more important to make sure that whatever you're learning has actually been transferred into your workplace. So earlier, what used to happen was that people would learn skills, 
It was not that people never learn skills. People would always learn skills. But how is that actually applicable was somewhere where we saw the gap. So the biggest gap between in learning and development was between learning new skills and applying the new skills. And for that, it became very important for us to understand certain things like what are these skills and what are their drivers? Okay, so before we understand what are the skills and what are the drivers, let us understand about the skill gap, right? So especially in the last couple of years, we've uh, seen skill gap as a major thing. A lot of organizations across all arenas, it could be IT, it could be manufacturing, education, pharmaceutical, name it, and you see that there's been a skill gap. And this is not across, this is not something that happened in the past two years. This only came into visibility in the past two years. This has been something that has been across an entire generation or more than one generation. And if we don't actually see what that gap is, and if we don't address that gap, it will definitely have dire consequences. The future, right? The future of work is something that we need to understand. And to understand the future of work, we need to understand what this skill gap is. And also, as we are seeing today, the nature of work has changed to a great extent. Right. So in work is no longer what it was before. People are working remotely. People are working from different parts of the world. And it's not necessary for you to be in a physical space. So what are these things? And that too, you know, there is a lot of specialization going on, automation. And we are now in what we call in the in the throes of what we call as the digital age. Right. So digital age is what we call you. You you must have, I mean, all of us have studied about the different prehistoric age and that age and, you know, this age. And this is the age. This is the era that we call as the digital age. And this in this digital age, it's um, not easy for us to understand what these skill gaps are. So skill sets can be different. Right. You can have different kinds of skill sets in a person. You know, you can have professional, you can have um, uh, technical skills, you can have uh, what we call as soft skills or what we call as hard skills, right? So these are the two types of skills that we generally talk about, the soft skills and the hard skills. In fact, one of the most important discoveries that has happened, especially in this pandemic, is people have recognized the importance of soft skills or what we call as, what I generally like to call as behavioral skills. You know, soft skills makes the term sound very uh, unimportant, according to me. But it's more of, you know, behavioral skills. It's about the psychology of a person and how a person is able to deal with these things. So you can see even on my screen there where you can see so many different soft skills. It can it can be uh, teamwork. It can be interpersonal relationships. You can see on the picture there, right? It can be emotional intelligence. In fact, emotional intelligence is one of the most important behavioral behavioral skills that people recognize today. And uh, let me tell you earlier, you know, I have told if, if you guys were people have met before, I have told you this before in the finishing school too, that uh, earlier, you know, organizations or institutions across would tell people, leave your emotions at home. We are not interested in your emotions. Okay. They would call it as emotional baggage. Whereas today it's completely changed. They say that be aware of your emotions and work on your emotions because emotionally intelligent people, self-aware people are definitely more work much better in the in their workplace rather than people who just, you know, ignore their emotions and just put it in a bag and, you know, just forget about it. That is when people get psychologically affected. So it's very important for us to understand these skills and uh, uh, new age skills or 21st century skills people just call it as modern skills what are these modern skills what are these let's let's look at a couple of divisions of these things right so some of the core competencies that people are uh, becoming aware of today are things like collaboration collaboration especially in a place where people are working virtually uh, I guess there are students here, there are people who are, I mean, the, the audience here must be from different backgrounds. So we all understand what, you know, virtual collaboration means as well, where you sit in different parts of the world, yet you are actually making sure that you work very well as a team and different functions, different uh, people work together and come together to make sure that the end result is excellent. So collaboration is one of the most important things. And it doesn't mean that you have to be in a physical space. You can be anywhere in the world yet make sure that 
you have a collaborative team. And digital literacy, I don't think I need to tell the generation of today the importance of digital and media literacy, right? So even basic skills, like uh, it could mean uh, uh, being aware of uh, basic computer skills, you know, basic technology. Uh, these are so important that without digital skills, you cannot survive in the world today. Without media skills, you cannot survive in the world today. You need to be aware of what is happening in the world around you. Critical thinking is something that's extremely important. Critical thinking, decision making, and problem solving. These are very, very sought after analytical skills. We call these as analytical skills. These skills are very, very sought after in the world today. And people are looking, people want, you know, uh, uh, workers who are very, very critical in their thinking. Creative thinking is another thing. We'll talk about it later. Innovation, new ideas, but critical thinking, approaching something in the right way, making sure all that we are doing in life is to address a problem. So we have a problem, we want a solution. And for that, one of the best approaches is critical thinking. Critical thinking, problem solving, and decision making, they all come under analytical skills. So these are very, very sought after. These are just examples. We'll dig deep into it. These are very, very sought after skills that is very important for people to survive in the world today. And this is where we see a skill gap. So skill gap is about deeper learning. It's not just about saying, oh, I am a team player. You know, I am collaborative. But it's very important for you to dig, dig deeper and become more aware of critical thinking, problem solving, teamwork, combination of lot of soft skills like interaction. Communication is very, very important. In fact, I believe, and I'm sure, Sandeep sir and all of you will agree with me that uh, uh, what helped us survive in during the pandemic was communication and technology. So once you bring these two things together, that is what we call 21st century skills. Okay, and there are many different dimensions to this, but if you look at the core of it, it's all about communication and technology. So just imagine if COVID had it hit us like uh, uh, 10 years ago, what would have happened? Would, it, would we have been able to survive the way we, were, we survive today? Because today we are very, very uh, uh, digitally and technologically advanced. And that's why we've been able to survive in a world like this today. That's why I'm able to sit and talk to you like this today. 10 or 12 years ago, we definitely would not have been able to do this, right? So let's look at a couple of things like, um, how do you actually look at the skill gap and how do you actually assess the skill gap? So today what organizations look for is, especially after the you know pandemic is, one of the most important things that they do to address the skill gap is to reskill people. So we all have our own you know, uh, workplace. We've all come in from a kind of atmosphere. We know certain things. So it's very important for us to unlearn and relearn unlearn and relearn is the mantra that I always ask you know people to follow because you cannot be in a set you cannot have a fixed mindset right you should be open so when you are open you'll be open to not only upskilling but you'll also be open to reskilling right so reskilling is very important so learn one is learn new skills one is you know learn different skills Re new skills and different skills are different we're talking about different things it's not just about up and up. It's also about your vertical and horizontal skills that we're talking about here. So it's very important for us to remember these things. And uh, it's one of the most important things that we need to understand about these core competencies, such as collaboration and critical thinking and problem solving is that it's difficult to assess these things, right? They're not tangible. You cannot touch them. You cannot feel them. You cannot understand them because what is Critical thinking to me might not be the same to you. So, you know, these are all not very tangible skills. And all that we can do here, and one of the most important 21st century outcomes that people look for, I'm not talking about skills, I'm looking and talking about outcomes that people look for is performance and how authentic you are. You know, how is your performance and how authentic you are? So that is what people look at. So if you are really somebody, if you develop these skills automatically you will get there okay so let's talk about these three skills and understand what the difference between these three type of skills are okay so first one we are going to talk about would be professional skills so professional skills are not skills that are you know taught per se in a classroom or uh, they are not taught to you in an atmosphere where you are put you are uh, given some notes and asked to acquire asked to you know prepare for and read these are skills that are acquired over a period of time 
right these are skills that are a part of they're not a part of a traditional coursework or anything like that they are professional skills they are skills like leadership they are skills like mentoring project management conflict okay even emotional intelligence all these are professional skills and these skills conflict resolution these skills resilience you know adaptive all these are professional skills that you must learn to make sure that you know it's very important add these value skill sets to without this any career doesn't move forward so professional skills are not skills that are taught to you that they are skills that you acquire over a period of time okay as you start working as you start interacting with people you acquire them now those are your professional skills now let's look at the next one what are these workplace skills so workplace skills are quite simple you know you can call them as employability skills to become a employable person what are the skills that you need to have you need to have your core knowledge skills okay whatever area that you are from you need to make sure that you have those skill sets like believe me nothing can work if you don't have your knowledge in the place right you need to know your subject and that is the most important thing so workplace skills it could be technology for example now we keep talking about things like uh, uh, you know there are different things that we talk about cloud and we talk about aws so many different tech i'm not a technology person but still you know data science data analytics so many things that we talk about when it comes to in fact you can see it right there on my screen also where you see artificial intelligence ai and machine learning cyber security i keep hearing that is one of the most sought after 21st century skills because that is one of the biggest threats that we are going to face moving on and we need people who can handle that right so what you see on the screen there are the top tech skills and above that you see what are the top soft skills or behavioral skills that you need to have and these tech skills are what we call as the workplace skills okay you need to have your knowledge right and you need to have your attitude right and you need to have your skills right right today in my company we were talking about some interviews just as an example and there were some candidates who were really good but we decided not to hire them just for a simple reason we felt that they did not have a collaborative attitude okay and that is going to hamper the growth of our organization so it's very important to have the right attitude the attitude to collaborate the attitude to learn the attitude to make sure that you listen all these things are very important and get along with your coworkers and customers especially the clients right so that is very important and now what are these soft skills so soft skills are basically a combination of both these things okay it is your professional skills and your workplace skills put together so there are skills like people skills sandeep sir was saying i pride myself on being a people's person <laughs> okay so i believe that these skills are very very important so people skills social skills how do you interact with people in a social setup as well as a professional setup communication skills character assessment and your personality traits that you have uh, social and emotional intelligence all these things are what we call as the soft skills and these become very important for you to survive in the world workplace skills are what are going to take you to the job that you want but soft skills are those that are going to help you to survive in those jobs and move forward in your journey move forward in your career that's what your soft skills and the, and believe me it's a combination of professional skills and workplace skills they both put together are what you call as your soft skills so this is very important and uh one of the most important things that we look at when we are bringing teams together is complementing skills as well so if i am a people's person i need a tech person in my team as well right i need a person who is very driven towards uh, i am a very human driven person right i need people who are dri driven result driven people as well so when all these people come together that is when a team really functions well and that is what we talk about when we call our soft skills so we have to recognize the importance of both the technological skills and your soft skills to make sure that they play an equal role in your life in your career and what i have on the screen there are the most most desired skills i think you're not able to read some of the tech skills so let me try reading it out to you because it seems to be a little blur so you know internet of things and then you have uh, ai and then you have project management and then you have robotics and then you have cloud and cyber security data science uh, 
and machine learning these are some of the top tech skills that are you know looked for in the market today okay so moving on let's look at some you know workplace predictions now when we are talking about what is that that people are talking about as skills okay we look at some you know people some uh, organizations who are leaders in predicting these skills so you might see on the screen you see you know harvard business review and you see linkedin and you see pwc training industry on these are organizations who do a lot of research okay they do a lot of research and they talk about uh, what are the top trends in the industry today so even if you look at the linkedin workplace linkedin every year releases a workplace report okay so even if you look at the linkedin workplace report this is what they are talking about what are the top trends in the future of work now why are these skills needed because we need to get there with the future of work and we need to make sure we are in the right space right that's why we need the skill sets right without having to work for it there is no point in gaining these skills so what are these top uh, trends okay let's look at some of these top trends so old work paradigms so old work paradigms will die in the sense the way we used to work before the way we used to actually function before that is definitely going to change in the future so there is going to be a major paradigm shift so what is the paradigm the paradigm shift generally happens when there is an important change when there's some huge change that happens and when your usual way of thinking or usual way of doing something is replaced by a new or a different way right so that is something that works to a great extent and we've seen how paradigms have shifted in the pandemic world we still not in the post pandemic world unfortunately we are still very much in the pandemic world we have not gotten to the post part of the pandemic world hopefully we will get there soon so old paradigms will die and old paradigms have already started dying and we are looking at new ways new uh, methods of working and it's working they are working so technology will scale collaboration and communities will be built through software so this is a very very important uh, learning that i myself had and that is why i made the shift in this career so i'm working with an organization called edstellar and we are building a huge saas platform and when i see the learnings that i have in how technology can you know assist the entire cycle of any kind of training an organization that wants to do it just by the click of a finger so just through software in my organization we are building that entire cycle where people don't have to really work on it sit and you know we we say tat i don't know if you all know about tat it's just turn around time so reduce the turn around time because time is one of the commodities that we don't have a lot about today right no none of us we always complain oh i don't have time in fact we all have the same amount of time every day but uh, uh, reducing the time and making sure the effect of it is more you know whatever the outcomes are more that can be assessed through that, that can actually be accessed through technology to a great extent and most of the organizations are seeing this and they are scaling this and bringing communities together onto common platforms through technology and everything is built to software so this is one of the most common trends that i am able to see today so people will reimagine their careers and their entire lives we've already seen this this is happening we are all reimagining our lives we are seeing that look at this work from home i worked with in fact even pwc i worked with so many organizations in the last few months before i joined edstellar and all that i see employees talk about is how they've reimagined their careers they they've started looking at new things they started at you know people have started especially work from home has made people realize the importance of so many things the importance of life that is what we have learned so people have started looking at work in a different way now earlier work was just something that you did to earn money now people realize the importance of work and the importance of work life balance one of the most important learnings in the pandemic was work life balance okay some of us could achieve it some of us could not okay but we are always trying to okay online learning or virtual learning will see a continuous massive growth that is very very true and initially even i was very skeptical about uh, virtual learning and the effects of virtual learning but you know like me many of my colleagues have seen that this works organizations have seen that this works so this is going to stay with us we might go on into a hybrid mode we might go on into blended learning 
but online learning is here for life now it's not going to go anywhere it's definitely here virtual recruiting i've been doing it from morning today virtual recruiting people are not here but i've been today my whole day has been spent in conducting interviews okay and all my interviews have been virtual okay so virtual recruiting people those of you are from hr here remember students it's very very important to make sure that it's not hr earlier is to be just about people skills now it's about tech skills as well so make sure that you balance both because virtual recruiting work when work from home is there why not virtual recruiting right so it's here to say and uh, i was reading something very interesting on uh, the linkedin workplace uh, you know reports recently and in the last couple of years learning and development and human resource was pushed back because it was more important to survive right it was more important business became more important but now we are back we are again one of the most important stakeholders because people have realized that without learning and without you know humanity business is not going to survive either so chros those of you are in the hr you are going you know a long journey because you are going to see that you are going to be the leaders of tomorrow you are going to be leading the organizations and you are going to be in really in control of how organizations are going to function and this i have already started seeing this okay so virtual selling we've seen that amazon and uh, flipkart all these things they made so much money you know these organizations like uh, 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 you know where virtual selling was one of they 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 really rocked it in the pandemic so that is also here to say now even uh, now people have started going back to shops but still you know you're so even something like big basket i can't imagine my life without big basket anymore you know just by the click of a finger name make sure that everything comes here so virtual selling is the rule moving forward and face to face selling has become an exception earlier it was the other way around if i don't get something in a shop then i will look for it on amazon now it's the other way around even if if i don't get it on amazon then i will look for it in a shop maybe or maybe i will look for it on flipkart or mintra or jabang or somewhere else or ebay or somewhere because now the world is an oyster right you have it at your fingertips basically right so another very important learning that we had not only during the pandemic but even before that that we started talking about is diversity and inclusion and equity okay this is become very important for organizations and uh, you know the focus is on this now making sure that uh, every organization is inclusive okay so this has become something that's very important no matter what gender you are no matter what age you are no matter what background you are people cannot question you anymore if you have the right skills only if you have the right skills otherwise it doesn't work right okay so people centric leadership we even call it sometimes as servant leadership situation leadership this has become the way forward it's the leaders are supposed to be people centric have always supposed to be you know even before they were supposed to be people centric but it did not work that way okay but now we have seen that that is the only way forward and that's the only way leaders can actually make a mark you know when they are focused on their on the people who work in their organization not just about the other things so this is this is what the future of work predictions say and if we follow these things it's it's uh, it's just not possible it's impossible for us not to get to the space that we want to be you know if we follow these things because these are the top prediction that's predictions that we see okay so yes let's move a little more ahead so what are these new age skills i already spoke to you about hard skills versus soft skills it says on the screen and then you can see an image of technology so you know it's technology is bringing all these things together and there are certain skills that uh, we must and should have remember to assess the uh, make sure that there is no skill gap there are certain skills that we must make sure that we have number one in the world that we live in today digital competencies right if i had told sandeep sir that oh my god zoom how do i work on that i have absolutely no clue he would have said bye to me okay so that's the world that we are in today so it's very important for us to make sure that we have the right digital competencies right digital skills whatever the need is i i will tell you in my own learning and development industry i have seen trainers who are amazing who have the lot of knowledge who have lot of uh, skills and who have so much experience to share but they could not adapt to the virtual learning and that is why they are no longer working today 
those who have made the shift well have actually flourished in the world today and that is very important you should be able to understand what your digital what are the digital needs for you to stay in the space today and for you to bloom in the space today that is very very important same thing technological skills and digital skills uh, technology is learning new things that will complement your digital skills we spoke about technological skills in the uh, couple of slides before so having the right technological skills which support your uh, uh, skill which support your uh, knowledge your work arena making sure that you have the right technological skills for that analytical skills remember i spoke about this in the first slide as well where i spoke about uh, critical thinking decision making and uh, problem solving these are what we call as analytical skills so you are able to look at a problem analyze that problem and make sure that uh, you have the right solution for this those are called as an analytical journey that people follow in their workplaces like i said everything is about a problem we all have a problem to solve so what is your approach what is that you take first you look at the problem then you dissect the problem and then you look at uh, different approaches that you can use to actually make sure that you solve that problem and so on and so forth and uh, what are then you finally reach into a stage that we call as problem solving when you know how to solve a problem it could be more than one way you have the you, you take the right decisions and you make sure that you solve the problem correctly that is what you call as your analytical skills communication and social skills very very important in the world today and without communication especially imagine in a virtual workplace okay if you're not able to communicate well what happens i'll give you an example that you know i recently so it's a very very simple example that uh, when i was doing some coaching for uh, one of the big fours okay this just happened uh, maybe last month they were giving me some examples about how important communication skills were and they were telling me about their own experiences in the workplace where they're all working virtually and um, uh, they told me things uh, where you know they now they the earlier the teams you would sit in kolkata teams would sit in bangalore now it's across you know cities across countries that people sit in and uh, uh, the new team member had joined in and that team member was very quiet and these people were all busy talking to each other because they were already there and they were uh, uh, going on with work as usual okay it took some time for them to realize that that team member was not even communicating with them in any way okay so this was a team based out of calcutta and a new person had joined in from bangalore into that team it was a very very simple simple thing that was happening here the person who had joined in from bangalore did not know him so how would they understand what these people are talking so internally of course when they're talking with clients and all that the business language of the world would be english and they would speak in english right but this was internal discussions within the team and automatically you fall into your comfort language that is quite normal for all of us we fall into whatever our mother tongue is or a comfort language and it's 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 natural but uh, here then they realize that then somebody thought why not ask this person a question the manager or somebody and reached out and asked and then this person said i don't even understand what you people are saying so I, and i cannot communicate even if i do understand i don't know enough hindi to actually contribute so communication skills are very important and you know questioning and listening and now with the pandemic especially with the pandemic uh, organizations are looking for you know employers are looking for employees who have proficiencies like communicate eloquently with clarity of thoughts capability to make sure that they are align with the business objectives they should have that comprehension that is very important in communication i think in my own way that's not important in a pandemic when we are working in a virtual space you should be able to align your thought process with the thought process of the business that is very important they should all go hand in hand and good social skills because you are not working earlier when people would join in into organizations they would have you know a face to face interaction and they would all be some team bonding and all these things now that doesn't happen so it's very important to learn social skills as well you know it takes 
some I've seen organizations who have these informal 10 minutes per day kind of a thing where it's maybe a Zumba class on one day or maybe just, uh, you know, where everybody eats lunch together from their home, but they're eating it together and they're on Zoom or something and they're looking at each other and eating lunch because these things that happened off your work table, that was very important in team bonding and teams supporting each other. And today that doesn't happen. So good social skills is very important and it's very important in the world today that you encourage group and peer-to-peer -peer learning. And that happens only with good communication and good social skills. And one of the most important things that people have come across as new age skills is growth mindset. You know, without growth mindset, it doesn't work. One of the major things that organizations are going through today are transformations, whether it is agile transformation or whether it is digital transformation. Okay, they are undergoing huge transformations or maybe even an agile digital transformation. Right. So organizations are going through that space and there is resistance from whom? From everybody, from all of us. Right. We are all resisting the change. What we need to understand is change is inevitable. Change will happen. Can you stop it? Could you stop the pandemic from happening? We couldn't. Right. Change is in inevitable. What we need to do is we need to learn to be adaptive. That is the most important skill that people look at today. So growth mindset is nothing but adaptive mindset. So continued learning mindset is one of the things that organizations look for in the world today. Learning and development teams constantly have, uh, you know, not only training, but coaching on people wanting to have that growth and adaptive mindset, because every employer will be happy to hire somebody with a growth mindset. We want people who are ready to, who are adaptive. We want people who are ready to open their minds to grow. And a lot of people think that this is a very basic skill set. You know, why is it important? We're all, you know, we all have this growth mindset. It's not true. You know, we all have a fixed mindset, whereas we need to open ourselves up. And even though this is a basic skill set, which ideally all of us should have, we need to recognize the importance of it and the relevance of it, especially in the current times. So in my experience, a lot of organizations, I see them focusing a lot on growth mindset because growth mindset reflects learnability, openness, openness of mind for constructive criticism, business growth and self-growth have to happen simultaneously. And growth mindset makes you move in that direction because not only will you develop the uh, capability, but you will also develop the willingness to adopt and adapt. It's not just to adopt. What is the difference between adopt and adapt is you adopt a certain skill, but you adapt to change, right? So apart from willingness to learn and uh, growth mindset also speaks about a person's risk-taking capabilities, okay? A lot of people don't like to take risks, but in the world today, it's important to take risks. Take risks, but take calculated risks. That is what we need to focus on and creativity and innovation. So this is what we really need to focus on. So these are the new must have new age skills, which all organizations are looking for in the this is what we call as our 21st century skills, right? So let's move on and look at a few more things. So what are these focus areas that we are talking about? It's good to understand the skills, right? But it's also important to have certain areas of focus. So what are the areas that the organizations or the learning and development uh, uh, teams and organizations are looking for to make sure that we are future ready? It's very important for us to be future ready, right? So what are these focus areas? Let's look at them. One is, of course, digital transformation. So everything is become virtual. You store data. You, have, you can access it anytime. Everything has become technologically oriented. People can work anywhere and still communicate with uh, each other. And I see that one of the most sought after people in organizations are heads of digital transformation because they are, you know, agile and digital transformation has become so important in the world today that this is what these are the focus areas. See, in the previous slide, I was talking about skills. Here I'm talking about the focus areas. You need to have these skills because you need to work on these focus areas, okay? So digital transformation is one very important thing. Virtual learning, very, very important in the uh, age today and most uh, learning and development future trends 
predict that I have been uh, interacting even in my organization at Stellar because we are in the uh, training space, interacting with so many uh, organizations and everybody tells us, you know what, virtual learning is here to stay and it's going to work. Of course, I do believe that education industry should not go virtual because there we need our guides and mentors to be close to us, right? We need to be able to see them, talk to them. But even there, sometimes it's happening. You know, I see it happening, but it's good in the education space, especially in your schools and in your colleges. I feel virtual learning is not something that is a great idea, but when it comes to work and organizations, virtual learning is the focus area and every organization is focusing on how to make sure that every learner in their organization has a virtual learning path you know the virtual learning path what should they learn now what is that they need to learn next so it's an entire virtual learning path that is being developed so one of the other focus areas like i already spoke about is diversity equity and inclusion so everybody is welcome that's what this says as long as you have the right skill sets so nothing nothing can compensate for your knowledge and your skills but uh, organizations have to be focused on diversity equity and inclusion because only then it doesn't matter whether you're a man woman or whatever gender if you have the right skill sets and if you're delivering you need to have the right opportunities right so that is what this means absolutely so companies are facing skill deficits we spoke about it right what are the skills and all that so there are these skill gaps and the organizations that are focusing on these three focus areas by using the skills that we saw in the previous slide they are the organizations who are thriving today they are the organizations who are doing really well today you know who are who have been able to succeed in spite of all these challenges that we have been facing in the past uh, a uh, couple of years organizations which have under, who have understood what are the skill sets that my people need to have okay and also they make sure that the right leaders are those who make sure that their uh, employees understand this and you know they partner with their employees it's not just telling them you do this you do that you learn this you learn that great leaders are always partners of their employees and they make sure that they are there with them at all points of time and they help them assess the skill gap. That is very important and that is where they gain an edge over their rivals. So let's look at this slide where you can see a few things uh, that is about uh, one second. That is about um, what are the focus areas. This also gives us some information. The four C's of learning and in, in, I've already spoken to you about this critical thinking and problem solving, creativity and innovation. So whenever there's a problem, there are two approaches that we take. One could be a critical thinking and one could be creative thinking. So it's very important for us to understand when should we apply the creative thinking approach and when should we apply the critical thinking approach, right? Then we have communication and collaboration. And then we have digital literacy that talks about uh, media, information, technology and communication. All these things are your digital literacy part that you focus on. Then we have the career and life. Remember, I spoke about work-life balance. So to make sure that all people are happy, it's very important to keep your people happy, right? If people are happy in organizations, people will stick with you. So as HRs, it's very important as people in the learning and development arena, it's very important to make sure that retention is there. People stick with us because we give them these opportunities. One is, you know, one they should have. They should be people. People are organizations look for people who are flexible and adaptable. At the same time, leaders also exhibit flexibility and adaptability. Okay, that is when they work together. Initiative and self-direction. So we look for people and organizations look, one of the top skills that people look for, that organizations or employers look for is people who are responsible and people who are accountable. Accountability, ownership and responsibility, top skills that people look for today. Top things. So are you somebody who takes ownership? Okay, we work in an agile atmosphere today. Nobody gives you direction. You are your own boss. And when you are your own boss, it means that you have to take initiative and you have to take self-direction. Don't wait for somebody else to tell you. You make sure that you are, you hold yourself accountable, you are responsible and make sure that you are adaptable as well. So social and cross-cultural interaction. Again, this was something that I saw that is as a major skill gap. And I was working with one of the big fours recently where, you know, 
organizations, the leadership team is sitting somewhere in the US. The digital team is sitting in India. And there is so much of a cultural gap between the two that people are not able to understand what each other is saying. So closing that social and cultural gap is very important. So that is where, you know, I really trained them on where they could actually, where I was talk, I was interacting with the digital team here because they were reporting to the leadership team sitting in US and they were just too scared to even ask questions. And believe me, these are all people with uh, 15 years of experience. This is because of the cultural gap. Okay, they don't know how to address this. Nobody has told them how to address this. And some things need to be told. Something need you need to give them that confidence, you know, where they're able to actually ask questions, address it, and then they automatically become better workers. Productivity and accountability, I'm sure there's no need to explain that because everybody knows that at the end of the day, you need to be productive, no matter what, right? Leadership and responsibility. So these are the top skills that we talk about in the uh, work. These are the focus areas. Okay, for digital transformation, virtual learning, diversity, all this to happen, these are the focus areas. Once we focus on this, organizations will thrive, you will thrive, everybody will thrive in their personal journeys. So this is what we look at moving on. So Sandeep sir, we address questions once it's all over, right? Yes, yes ma'am, at the end we will take it up. Okay, okay. So I can take another five, 10 minutes? Yes, yes ma'am. Okay. So this is another very interesting, uh, you know, picture that I always like to refer to, okay, as, as uh, we evolved as human beings, there has been evolution of learning systems as well. Earlier, I'll tell you one very, very simple way, earlier people would say training and development, okay, you can see in the first one there as well. Training and development was what uh, organizations would call their uh, uh, teams, okay, the ones who focus on it. And then that was very trainers, organization centric. So as an organization, I feel that you need to have these skills. So I'm going to train you on these skills. Today, it has changed. It's become learner centric, right? So what do my employees need to become more productive? I'm going to help them learn those skills. So it's no longer trainer-centric, it's learner-centric. And then moving on, it has become from training and development, it moved to learning and development. And now we talk about organizational development. So under organizational development, you have your agile, you have your digital transformation, and you have innovation. You have so many different things that come under your learn your organization development so if you look at this journey you see that there are so many things and finally we have we have started with training and certification and finally the last step that you see there is learning relationship personal relationship and personal transformation so where you bloom as an individual and you become a better employer or an employee that is what the learning and development space is focusing on today it's not just you get a certification and you are there it is that as a learner, are you there? What are the things that you've learned? What are your skill sets? That has helped you not only to transform yourself, but helps you to transform your organization as well. That's what people are looking at. So some this is a skill breakdown that I put up for you here, okay? So we spoke about skills. We spoke about the focus areas. So the, we spoke about the macro. So these are some micro parts that we are looking at here, okay? So agile mindset. So agile mindset is something that I have found very interesting, although I'm not an agile, uh, uh, what do I say, I'm not a person who is, uh, who excels in agile or something, but I see the importance of that. So being agile means that recognizing yourself and what are your skill sets, that is one part of it, but recognizing the people you work with and they how they communicate and how they approach things. So it's not just about self-awareness, it's being aware of people around you. That is agile mindset where you see that if you are a creative person, is somebody else a critical or an analytical person? And how do you recognize that in that person and how well you work together? So in the digital era, especially, agile mindset is not, you know, anchored. It's like a loop, okay? It, it's, it's like a circle, okay? And this is a trait that people need to have because this helps them to solve difficult challenges. It makes them easy to break up tasks, big tasks into smaller milestones, Okay, and focus on them and uh, 
goal in sight is easy when you have an agile mindset. Okay. And of course, new media literacy, you all know what it means. Virtual collaboration, I've spoken about it. Continual learning. So there is no end to learning. I would love to learn new things all the time, you know, and I keep trying to as well. It's very important for me to evolve, keep evolving as a person. And I believe everybody should do that whenever you have time. Design thinking, one of the most sought after skills. In fact, agile mindset and design thinking go hand in hand. And uh, you should be able to uh, give your customers whatever they want. And for that, design thinking is very important. It's Everything has to be customer centric, your orientation. What is the customer? So we've, we've seen in restaurants and all that earlier, right? Customer is the king. And that's very true everywhere. You know, it's, it's about what they want. A lot of times what organizations or teams think is that hey, we'll do it this way because this is the best way. No, it's not that. What they want is what you need to deliver. Right. So uh, I also think computational thinking. So how do you actually think in a way that aligns with technology? Cross-functional dexterity, I just told you a couple of examples about it's not not only across uh, societies, across countries, it's also across teams, whether it's a team or whether it is a digital team, whether it's a you know leadership team, every team should be agile. And that's when it works. AI and data analytics. We know that uh, AI is going to conquer the world. And that's why we need to agree, uh, you know, acquire these skill sets because uh, otherwise automation will make sure that you no longer have a job unless you acquire these uh, skill sets because the world is getting automated, right? Managing change. So as I told you earlier, growth mindset helps you to manage change. These are very, very important skills that people are looking for in the 21st century. When you look at, you know, the couple of years coming up, that is, your, you know, your uh, uh, 2022, 23, 24, 25. These are the areas of focus and these are the skills that we need to acquire, that we need to have. Make sure that, that we need to have these skills. Okay. So, technologies. So, what are these? One is acquiring these skills, but what are these technologies that will play a vital role? As especially here, uh, since we're talking about learning and development, I'm talking about learning and development uh, technologies that will help you know your HR or your learning and development to actually focus well on making sure that employees are getting there. So, learning experience LXPs. I'm sure you've all heard of. LXP's learning experience platforms, right? Uh, LMS we had earlier, now it's become LXP's where you know you have gamification and so many other things that are involved on these learning experience platforms, okay? And then we have the learning and training management platforms, one of which I'm helping to build where you know everything can come under uh, one system. It's like a SaaS system. There are few in the world, but there is a scope to grow further and make sure that Learning and development journeys happen. That is what I intend to do. Make sure that the entire learning and development journey happens on the platform that I'm helping build. So, which is called Edstella, like I told you. So entire thing that keeps happening there. So learning and training management platforms are going to rule the world tomorrow. And then we have these micro learning platforms where, you know, you talk about particular skill sets and they help you to gain those particular learning and development and LXP, we are looking at macro. But then you have micro also, small things that you can learn on micro learning platforms. And then the learning analytical tools that you have. There are so many tools. And uh, in fact, you have so many collaboration tools as well. And then you have so many HR tools, HR analytical tools. Depending on what areas that you're looking at, you can uh, make sure that you get these skill sets and make sure that you uh, add these to yourself as a human, as, as a HR professional or as any kind of professional because these learning analytical tools based on whichever profession you are in whether it's data analytics or HR analytics or whatever it is you know it will help you to you know grow further in your uh, workplace as well so these are technologies which are very very important and these are upcoming technologies which are going to conquer and rule the world moving forward so yes and uh, that's about it. And uh, thank you all very much. And thank you, Sandeep, sir. And uh, uh, thank you so much, ma'am. Indeed, uh, it was such a wonderful and informative session. So, ma'am, we'll just uh, move ahead with the Q&A section where we have a few questions which a uh, few of our participants have asked. So, we'll just quickly take up these questions, ma'am. Uh, Sandeep, sir. Uh, so the first question has been asked by Vaishnavi. She is good evening to everyone. I have a doubt. Uh, 
I am doing a PGDM and I don't have any skills. Means I can't speak in English with others properly, and mainly I don't grab others' interest when I when I am. I think when I'm giving the presentations. Yes. What yes. are the remedies should I follow? So, firstly, uh, Vaishnavi, not knowing English is not a major gap. Okay, so it's just a language. How difficult it is to learn the language. It's not at all difficult. So uh, uh, believe in yourself, and uh, nobody is there in the world without any skill sets. We all have our own skill sets. It's about recognizing the skill sets and also making sure that you do some research and what are the skill sets that will supplement your your uh, what do I say the space that you are in, whether you are in HR, whether you're in marketing, whether you are in any of the different. Uh, the smaller groups, you know, whether in finance or whatever it is. So making sure that English is one separate part that you can definitely learn. It's not rocket science. The other end is make sure that you do some research and you're able to focus on whatever skill sets that you need to acquire for your workplace. And once you do that, automatically, it's all about putting in that effort putting in that effort and making sure that th those are the remedies that you should follow. Put in that effort, understand what are the skills that you need to gain. That is the most simple thing. That we you, as you rightly said, Nam, it is a learnable skill where they can yes. probably take the small steps to learn things. Correct. The baby steps might help them a big way. Absolutely. Uh, I hope we, uh, we have answered Vaishnavi. Thank you so much, ma'am, for that. Uh, mm -hmm. Moving to the next question. It is, ma'am, what is digital literacy? So digital literacy is, uh, like I told you in the beginning, it is their basic skills, okay? An individual's ability to actually make sure that you're able to communicate through uh, media, through all these uh, digital platforms, okay? Even small things like, you know, maybe, you know, Google forms or uh, maybe making sure that uh, you're able to, uh, uh, let's say that you know media and bringing in text together designing using technology all these are what is called as your digital literacy skills so just putting these things together and trying to and you understand that what are the things that you need for this are in your workspace how do you become more digital is how do you use technology to supplement what you already know and how are you using it to deliver that is your digital literacy digital skills. skills yes digital skills thank you for that ma'am the next, uh, I think this is not the question. Moreover, uh, they have shared their experience. I Absolutely. Sandeep, sir, uh, can I just read that out if you don't mind? Yes, ma'am, please. Yeah. I'm a faculty teaching management courses for the past 17 years. And after the pandemic, I'm well-versed with virtual teaching because of my preparation style by connecting with students, giving them material in advance, sharing PPTs, giving them instructions about it, utility. I'm comfortable dealing with them with more closeness. So this is entirely what I was talking about, right? So yeah. this is how you become more comfortable. Jai Kumar, sir, you're absolutely right. You know, this is how we deal with things, right? And make sure we are there and make sure we use technology to support whatever skills you have. And this is digital literacy, actually. If I'm not wrong, this is digital literacy. And Vaishnavi, this is how you add skills. So uh, moving to the next uh, question, Nam, it has been asked by Chetra Jay. What is 21st century skills are in demand? Okay. Now, I you've been uh, talking about this. this quite a while now. Exactly, Chaitra, my whole PPT talks, the whole thing that I've been talking about is about 21st century skills. It could be your technological skills, your hard skills, your soft skills. Remember, I spoke about professional skills, your workplace skills and the soft skills, and I gave you a breakup of that as well. So it depends on the place that you are in and the workplace that you are in. What are you looking at? And uh, uh, what are the skill set like agility, like communication? and the right technological skills based on your uh, uh, job role. That is very important. Now, for example, I don't need something like cloud computing because I'm not in that space. But if you're in a technological place, you need that. If you're in an HR space, you need HR analytical tools. Okay, so all these skills, at the same time, you need communication. So all these are the skill sets that we are talking about that are in demand today. Hope uh, you've got the, got now Chaitra. So moving to the next question, uh, is it important to have cross-cultural knowledge in the 21st absolutely. century? Absolutely, absolutely. As I've been giving you examples as well. Now, because we're working virtually, we do not 
not everybody in the team belongs to the same comes from the same background not everybody comes from the same experiences we all come from different backgrounds different social and economic and cultural spaces so knowing about others in fact you know when i've been in certain uh, before the pandemic i was with uh, a group of uh, students a group of people in siemens and i was they were supposed to go to japan and you know it was a complete journey with them about how they should actually deal with people who are sitting there in japan how should they even eating you know things like your cutlery all these things right so cross cultural knowledge has become even more important today because we have diverse teams when i say diverse teams they can be from any country any background so ask questions understand them do research it's very important thank you ma'am i hope you have got the answer anupriya uh shanu ask what are the learning strategies for the 21st century so learning strategies for 20, so a learning strategy is a way in which an individual actually um, organizes your skills you know that is your strategy right how do you organize your skills and how do you make sure that you accomplish your tasks or you learn to make sure that it is effective so all these skills that i was talking about all these time how do you pick and choose those skills and how do you make sure what is important for you so there is something called as pareto principle where you talk about uh, uh, let's say you have 10 tasks or 10 uh, learnings that you want to learn okay so out of the 10 you pick the top two which are things that you can easily work on and those top two give you 80% results so the 20% of the most important things that you want to focus on usually give you the 80% results the remaining eight things will only give you the 20% results so learning strategies are you focusing on what are your top two things that you want to focus on i spoke about so many things you choose the top two things for yourself and make a list of the 10 things that you want to do choose the top two things learn a little bit about pareto principle it's very interesting okay and apply pareto principle into your uh, learning strategy so what are the top two things that are going to give you your 80% results so that is how you apply strategy in learning because it's about you as an individual how do you organize your learning what is the outcome that you want to derive that's how you should focus on thank you ma'am so another about uh, two or three questions will take more ma'am because we are yes. running short of time So the next question has been asked by Rajiv Balakrishnan. Why should employability and social and emotional learning be prioritized in education? Okay. Now, employability is the end result, right? Why does I mean I don't believe that everybody should learn just because you need to get a job. I feel that learning is irrespective of employability. But the end of the day, whatever skills that we are you know acquiring is because we want to be more employable. right whatever uh, we are learning so social and emotional learning like i spoke in the beginning they should definitely be prioritized because without your soft skills you cannot survive in the world today remember what i told you your hard skills can get you a job but your soft skills are what are going to take you forward so social and emotional learning is what is going to help you to sustain and move forward right and that is why social and emotional learning should be prioritized as in in education even today i see a lot of teachers a lot of teaching professionals who are who interact with the students much better earlier it used to be very transactional but today is i see that in gibs as well i see the students things come talk to the faculty in many uh, education institutions i've seen it today you know where they are able to connect on a personal level and that is what you mean by social and emotional learning so it definitely should be prioritized in education thank you ma'am for that so uh we'll take two more questions ma'am last sure. so what makes communication such an important ability in the 21st century so shanti it's what i said today today we work in a, all of us even today see we are working in a virtual space i am not able to see all of you you are able to see me sometimes maybe not able to see me on the times so unless i am able to tell you what i want to tell you in a clear way you will not be able to understand what i am saying because we sit you are somewhere else and i am somewhere else right so that is why communication becomes even more important because you should be able to articulate whatever you you want to say so it's about what is there in your mind and that you are able to clearly convey to somebody else that is what communication means so if i am saying something and you understand what i'm saying and you are able to respond to me that is all communication is right objective and influence 
that's all it is about okay what is the objective and what is the impact right so if that is there only then can you work well in a virtual space or any space for that matter it doesn't mean only a virtual space right unless you're able to communicate with people well unless you're able to give your ideas well unless you're able to understand listen there is no point in nothing nothing functions so communication is extremely important thank you thank you so much ma'am uh, for answering such all the questions of the uh, people we apologize there might be few more questions where uh, we are unable to take up yes, uh, absolutely informative session ma'am thank you for these insightful ma'am i'm a bba ma'am there's one bba graduate i thank want so to please address it's a pleasure and uh, yes sir uh, another question the question is by uh, swarnail mukherji i am a bba graduate of year 2021 and still yet to pursue mba hmm. i am trying to acquire knowledge and skills from different fields so that i can add in my cv because universities and companies wants those can you guide me how can i manage these things and hmm. learn skills properly first thing swarnail why are you trying to learn knowledge and skills from different fields focus on your field right first become an expert in your field and then what are the supplementary fields right so if i am somebody who is in the training industry i need to learn skills which are side by side with my industry i don't need to learn everything and anything that comes in right companies want it but that doesn't mean that you can it's better to be you know what do you say that um, master of you cannot what what is it is something that says no jack of all that's basically the jack of all and king, king of yeah. none king of master of none king of none that's not what you should be focus on your skill sets that you are you know uh, uh, that you have that you need for your particular arena and first learn those things and then add those so what i usually tell people is that how do you learn skills properly we don't understand it so what we need to do there are a lot of few uh, free skills on udemy and course there are a few free, free courses so first experiment with various courses that you can do and understand which one do you like best what are the skill sets that you can answer and then you move on to a paid one and you know make sure that you have that big important uh, skill that you can put on your cv as well so that is very important but focus on your area not on different fields thank you thank you so much ma'am for uh, we uh, thank you all for the insightful session and uh, i would like to thank all the participants for asking all the questions and i hope you had an amazing session so uh, please allow me to thank uh, smita ma'am so smita ma'am it was really a grateful uh, session for enlightening us on 21st century skills required in lnd and uh, and the useful tips and information which you have shared with us on behalf of team gibs business school bangalore i extend a sincere thanks and a big thank you to my extended family that's all our participants who have been through all these sessions and invested the time rather than spending it so and jbs is known for sharing the knowledge and it, its hospitality so i request all the participants in case if they can wish to visit jbs they can experience by visiting our premises and i'm sure they would love the infrastructure of jbs which is beautifully built and i can vouch for that thank you thank you so much ma'am it, it really means a lot and uh, you can all uh, just for the participants this is for your information you can watch the videos of all the previous webinar in youtube and the e certificate of this session will be shared that is on 10th that is day after tomorrow that will be sent on your uh, registered email ids and uh, before we wind up uh, not to miss the upcoming webinar which is on 18th uh, november and it's on the importance of mindset and the skill set in achieving success by uh, mr deepak justin who is a tedx speaker a motivational speaker corporate trainer and a professional speaker so kindly do not miss to register for that and do follow gibs on all the social media platforms so that you can stay updated and you can get to know that we been spreading the knowledge throughout the various national and international speakers like smita ma'am who has been such a wonderful throughout the sessions and ma'am we have learned a lot of things like i for me personally i would say uh, unlearn and relearn is the takeaway which i will surely try to inculcate in my life which i keep unlearning things and relearning new things which will take me throughout the journey thank you thank, thank you, you so much, so much ma'am thank you so much sandeep sir it was a pleasure thank you so much thank you and i would like to thank all the participants once again and please take care of yourself thank you smita ma'am
thank you thanks to all the participants and for all the wonderful questions it was a great uh, one hour well spent here thank you so much sandeep sir thank you thank you have a good day you too bye